and I asked busy, successful people just how they got everything done without having to work 24-7. Don't sleep. Plenty of time then. <laughs> so you're actually getting demoted over time until you end up right. getting roughly the uh, amount per hour of a Burger King employee while you're working as an investment banker. Which honestly isn't that much more than the hourly wage of a fast food worker. Well, for one, stop multitasking. I used to work a lot, at minimum 14 hours a day. Between being a software engineer, a YouTuber, and managing multiple properties, I was overwhelmed. I had two choices. Either I had to give something up, or I had to rethink the way that I approached working. So I ended up changing. There was a lot of trial and error involved, tons of research about the science of productivity, and I asked busy, successful people just how they got everything done without having to work 24-7. Don't sleep, plenty of time then. <laughs> no, 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 no. Trust me, I've been there. And thankfully, I'm now on the other side. One of the most profound ideas that I came across, which it's actually really simple, was about changing the way that you value your time, especially in the context of annual salary versus your hourly income. The, the first step really is, is looking at new measurements of time and how you spend that time. So first of all, I'd encourage everybody to look at their hourly income instead of their annual income, because it's very common that you might make $50,000 a year, get a raise to 55, but your workload goes up 20%. So you're actually getting demoted over time until you end up right. getting roughly the uh, amount per hour of a Burger King employee while you're working as an investment banker, which seems to be the fashion at the moment. So that was Tim Ferriss, the author of The 4-Hour Workweek. It's a great read. I've actually linked the book in the description below if you want to check it out. He claims that we put too much emphasis on that annual salary without actually thinking about what our time is actually valued at. Annual salaries are a sneaky way of capping our potential income while demanding limitless time. So I went ahead and listed out the highest paying jobs and their median salaries in 2023. I found the median hours worked for each profession and calculated the average hourly rate per job. You guys, the results were shocking. So here are some of the professions that I listed, and I got these stats from the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics in 2023. So let's take a look. For software developers, we're making about $132,000, and we work about 45 hours a week, which comes out to $56 an hour. The way they calculate this is just by dividing the number by 52 weeks in the year, and then also dividing by the median hours worked. And you can see that's 45 hours here. The assumption for this hourly wage is probably a 40-hour work week but we know that that's not true. And now $56 an hour is actually pretty good. It's not bad, but you can see that it's not quite what the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics claims it is. Now, if we go to lawyers, lawyers typically work 55 hours a week, and I've heard even more, but this is the statistic I got online. So this comes out to $50 an hour instead of $70 an hour, and that's a huge difference. Let's look at airline pilots. So this is also about $54 an hour. So you can see that actually airline pilots make a lot more than software engineers do, but not really if you think about it because they work way more hours. They're making on average $54 an hour versus software engineers making $56 an hour. Now with fast food workers, I think it's a little bit more clear because if you're working 40 hours a week, you're making that 14, 20 an hour. And if you work more, you typically get overtime. So this seems to be accurate. And we all know with teachers, their day isn't done when the school day is done. They have to go grade papers, create new lessons, plans and do a lot of stuff outside of their workday. We found 53 hours to be a little bit more accurate rather than 40 hours a week. So for the secondary school teachers, that comes out to about 23 an hour which honestly isn't that much more than the hourly wage of a fast food worker. And with being a teacher, you're going to school, you're getting your degree. A lot of times you're getting a master's degree to be a high school teacher. So with this in mind, how do we stop robbing ourselves of our time and still get the same amount of work done? Well, for one, stop multitasking. It may sound counterintuitive, especially to all the overachievers out there, but in The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papasan, they talk about the extraordinary success that you can achieve by focusing on one thing at a time. We're typically told to try to handle multiple things at the same time so as to get more done, but in reality, that just decreases the quality of each task that we're working on because we're spreading ourselves too thin. One way to overcome this is by time blocking. This involves setting aside specific blocks of time on your calendar dedicated exclusively to working on your one thing. By protecting your time from interruptions and distractions, you can ensure that your most important work gets done. And that's why I use today's sponsor, ClickUp. ClickUp is the ultimate productivity tool. It's one app that can replace all your other productivity and reminder apps 
apps. You can create folders for all your projects, drag and drop checklist boards, collaborate with partners, set recurring reminders, track your time on various tasks, manage calendars, and leverage a whole suite of productivity tools and templates created by experts. As I mentioned earlier, I've been using ClickUp to manage my calendar. It's been really easy to use, and it helps me focus on one task at a time before moving to the next. I've added 30 minute blocks for content creation, for example. So signing up a one-on-one -on -one with my editor, finishing thumbnail for the video. I've even added a 30 minute block for going for a walk. I think that's super important because you also want to time box your leisurely activities. You don't want to just overload it with a lot of work. So I also put some fun stuff like play pickleball for an hour, go work out, go cook, and do things that actually make me feel really good. My favorite features are the ability to categorize each task using specific labels so I can filter for them later on. And honestly, this kind of replaces my need to use my own Gmail calendar. Just today, I've marked off four things from my list that I wouldn't have marked off otherwise because usually it takes me like an entire week to actually focus and get things done. Now with ClickUp, it's taking less than half the amount of time just because I'm able to actually compartmentalize what I need to get done next. So that's why I recommend ClickUp. It's totally free, by the way, and you can use my link in the description below. Trust me, you won't regret taking charge of organizing your time and winning back even more in the process. In ancient China, there was a renowned archer known throughout the land for his unmatched skill. His bow was his most prized possession. Day after day, he would practice for hours, keeping his bow constantly bent, believing that the more he trained, the greater his mastery would become. However, one day as he pulled back the string to take aim, the bow snapped in his hands. The wood, once strong and flexible, had become brittle from being under constant tension. The archer was devastated, realizing that his most valuable tool was now useless. Not because because of poor craftsmanship, but because he had pushed it too far without giving it time to rest. Initially, being rich meant accumulating a lot of wealth and then enjoying that wealth in retirement. But according to long-term studies, like the Harvard Study of Adult Development, prioritizing your well-being and maintaining strong relationships throughout your life leads to increased happiness and fulfillment, not waiting to enjoy life in retirement. So what does this mean? It means that spending most of your time at a job that you hate, making a lot of money just to not really enjoy what you're doing is a horrible way to spend your life. You're not even guaranteed old age, and yet you buy into the idea that you have to do everything and be everything everywhere all at once. Sometimes the society and the social media has made us believe that uh, in order to be happy uh, with your life, you must uh, do 100 things together at the same time, and you must do everything perfectly. It's okay if you don't do everything perfectly. It's okay if you don't want to do everything just do some things or choose to do some things. So what if you just threw my advice away about doing more in less time and just did less? What if there are things in your life that you actually shouldn't be prioritizing at all and yet you're doing it anyways? And I get it, everyone has obligations, family, survival, safety, but isn't there that one thing that you could just give in on? Isn't there that one friend that you just always feel obligated to hang out with but you don't actually really enjoy spending time with them? Or isn't there that one work event that everyone always asks you to lead because I think you're so good at it, but you just dread doing it every single time. Change starts with making a 1% step in the right direction every single day. It doesn't have to be big, but you don't have to settle for feeling overwhelmed all of the time just for the sake of being productive. And I'll leave you with those last closing thoughts. So hopefully you guys got something out of this. I know it took me a lot of learning and relearning and failing to try to understand how to get to the point that I'm at now, and I'm still not perfect. There are times where I'm still overwhelmed, but I do have a lot more control over my schedule than I did before. I was overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs>